Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you guys know I appreciate your guys' support and 70% of you guys are not currently subscribed, so please do your boy Horcrux a favor. Hit the bell icon, hit the like button, but only if you like the content. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So this build is my Immortal Mag DK PvP build. This is my go-to for this patch. I did bring you a very bursty boy build, which is my first Mag DK build video. It's here called Blood Weave, something to that extent. Very cool name, by the way. Pat's on back. But this one's kind of just the opposite. You still have the burst, but this is more of a well-rounded Mag DK build. And it's using two sleeped on sets or slept on sets that kind of went under everyone's radar. I know everyone's crushing on Pariah, but the set I'm running is literally twice as good as Pariah. And when it just wait till we see it, we'll, we'll get it right into it, guys. Okay, so first thing, I am a Dunmer. The best in slot race is hands down a Breton. Okay, it is just straight up a Breton. Yeah, you do lose out on a little bit of that damage. But there's just so much damage right now. You don't need it. Like everything. Like, like look, look at my character screen. I'm not even running Nernhone. I'm sitting around 3,100 spell damage, and not one damage set. I'm not running one damage set. I'm running a sustain and a tank set, and I'm still hitting 10.5k whip tooltips, completely unbuffed. So go figure. So here's our character sheet. So you want to run Bewitch Sugar Skulls for your food. You could run the Astronaut Mundus, but to be honest, I am, I've am i never had so much sustain on a build. Um, this 1100 is, is very underwhelming just by face value, but that's not how we're proccing all of our sustain. You could almost swap this to the Apprentice and you can get away with it. So there's that. Back bar. This isn't everything fully proc'd. I'm going to kind of lead you guys into that. Here's the back bar, just a static value, 3100. Or 31k spell resist, excuse me, physical resist, crit resist, yada yada. So let's go ahead and go into the sets because I know you guys are very curious. Now, I do not have a Vetashran Destro Staff. If you have a vet Vetashran or Vetshran, whatever it is called, Destro Staff, then 100% use it. I am going to farm it today at the point of making this video. Get the Vetshran inferno staff because it pairs really well with this build and we have one free slot a weapon slot to free up and obviously willpower is not going to be better than vegetraff it is just not no matter how you toss it so currently running destro staff on the front bar running shock back to charge like i said this is to proc the burning stats effect and also to keep our concussed stats effect because we're running and charging enchant up on as many people as possible as frequently as possible as i said at the beginning i hate that I sound like a broken record, but there is enough damage to burst literally anyone. Coming from absolutely nowhere, I've discussed this months and months ago. That's the problem with ESO right now is that there's just too much goddamn damage. You do so much damage just by having nothing on. I just think it needs to be tweaked down like across the board. Zoss is really good about doing blanket nerfs, so why not just blanket nerf damage? You know, some food for thought. So, willpower, really not the big deal. Best friend, definitely best in slot. So, first set we're running. This is how you're going to be absolutely unkillable. I'm hoping you enjoyed the clip at the beginning. I was sitting on my horse. I had a bunch of Nightblades come up and try to one-bang me. They could not because of this set. What happens this patch, the more and more I play, the more I realize that... It's not the sustained damage that kills you. It's the spin to win, stamina, donny, in cat builds that come out of nowhere while you're 1vxing and they just one tap you. From zero, from 100 to 0 and then they if they don't one tap you they stealth up, cloak away, and they're out of 5,000. Wait another 15 seconds, they're back for another round of burst. <coughs> Excuse me. So this set is to get you off of your back bar. It is to make sure you survive this annoying burst. It just seems to come out of nowhere randomly. And once you live that burst, that's when you can go on the offensive. Because most classes right now are super high damage, low sustain, squishy. That's just what I found. Yeah, there's awesome people like me who do it all because I'm Horcrux, right? Making Mag DK great again. But for the bursty boys out there, this completely negates those builds whatsoever. And they're easy turnarounds and easy 1vxs. So... Let me go over what this this set does. So it gives you health, armor, armor, 
only running this on our back bar. The reason we're only running this on our back bar is because we don't want to accidentally proc this on our front bar when we're trying to be aggressive and chase. So the five piece, you have a 10% chance to essentially reduce all damage taken by 30%. This is a flat 30%. This isn't a buff. It's not purgeable. It doesn't stack or diminish with anything. It's a flat 30% negation. The only downside is it does remove reduce your movement speed by 50%. Let's be honest. Your movement speed's already reduced by a shit ton with snares and immobilizations. We do have a skill to kind of combat this a little bit to kind of help offset it, but let's be real. If you're a mag DK, unless you are vampire with misform, you're going to get trained. There's no getting away. It doesn't matter if you run race against time, whatever. You're going to get absolutely smacked when you're trying to relocate if you're not really careful with your positioning. This set allows you to relocate, maybe a little bit slower pace, but it allows you to relocate more efficiently. It allows you to survive the annoying burst and it gives you a turnaround potential because this you can proc it on your back bar and when you go to your front bar you're still getting this mitigation. So you have to risk it for the biscuit on the mag DK right now. I know it sounds stupid, but there's never really a moment that I feel safe going in for a kill. Uh, you always run the risk of getting stunned, like CC locked, and just Donnie spin to win. This set kind of, again, uh, prohibits that. So, running uh, sword and board, because it's what I have. Defending on the sword, it really doesn't matter what enchant because we're running poisons. And then the shield should be sturdy. Uh, max magic enchant there is a bug right now with blocking i'm not sure when they're going to fix it you run out of stamina so quick it's not just a cp related issue i've noticed that when i stop blocking as well my stamina will just drop for no reason there's definitely a bug at play i'm not sure how or why it's happening but it is so if you ever notice that your stamina sustain is dog shit it may not necessarily be you we are running a one piece, uh, Swarm Mothers. This is a three, one, three, three light, one medium, three heavy to offset all the pros and cons. Swarm Mothers or Dami House does not matter. The other set we're running is my favorite set in the game besides Amberplasm, Desert Rose. Guys, Desert Rose, let me hit you with some math, okay? This gives you armor, that's great health, Great Magicka, great running this in both bars by the way, the five piece. This gives you 2,000 Magicka every four seconds. You turn this into recovery, this is 1,000 recovery. Okay, when you bring it down to two seconds. This is all the time. Lich, for example, only gives you 1,000 recovery for 20 seconds of a one minute. This gives you that 1,000 recovery for the entire minute 100% uptime on this that's why I'm running it on both bars the amount of sustain you get from this is astronomical by far the best sustain set in the entire game if you wear this I swear to god you can put damage on literally everything and you will not have a sustain issue as long as you're fighting now if you're kind of out of combat and you're just kind of sitting there based off your normal magic recovery you're not going to jack shit back but if you're fighting this shit comes in clutch it is amazing so that being said, obviously it does a rose. 311, I'll reiterate. On most pieces, I have sturdy or in pin. Um, you probably want to spec into more sturdy to kind of offset whatever bug is going on. In pin as well, really good. All the bursty boys. Um, on my legs, I actually do have divines. Give me a little bit more recovery. It's not that big a deal. You can change this trait to really whatever you want. But I do not have a tri stat glyph on this because I have enough health. I'm actually considering taking off the tri stats on all my big pieces and just putting on max magica for a little bit more burst. So, all right, jewelry run all spell damage, and then the last set we're running is Malakan's Ban of Brutality. The mag DK intrinsically does not have that high of a crit ratio and you really don't have any passives or skills that kind of play off of your crit. So it's better to just not even worry about it. Yes, they did nerf Mala by about 4%. I think it was 4%. It did 20% uh, previous. But you can actually do some critical damage now, so it's not all that to bad. Um, right now we're sitting around 25% critical chance, which isn't terrible. So, um... <clears throat> Excuse me. There are other sets you can run, mythic items you can run. You don't need sustain, so you don't need like Tolan's constancy. Uh, some of the new mythic items are okay, but 
yeah, just, just go with Mala. Most of you will already have it. I really don't see um, any other mythic you could run. I mean, there's the, the feats, whatever item you can possibly run that to give you a little bit more recovery in each but you don't need it or stats excuse me I mean you really don't need you don't need more health you don't need more stamina so that would be kind of a wasted set but in my opinion this would be all around the the best to go and like I said take this with a grain of salt this is my rendition of the build um I hope you guys actually hit the sub button so you can see me stream this on occasion when I actually do get the time to stream because of work but so those are the sets sorry for the elongated explanation there I felt that is necessary to explain how good these sets are together notice everything was damage sustained set tanky set you need nothing more than that so take a look take a look at the tooltip it's 10.5 on flame lash it's completely unbuffed there's nothing going for this and it's not even earned honed so engulfing flames this gives us our <coughs> uh, extra 10 percent on all of our abilities essentially fossilized best you see in the game LA drain um, unless you're running my last Bursty Boy build or some other weird ass build, this is such a great ability. If you're running the Vetistrath Inferno Staff, absolutely have to have this. It's amazing. Free to cast. You do essentially 11% more damage to whoever this is on and gives you about the equivalent of 300 magic recovery. Have Flame Lash. I just spam this shit out. I think there's a bug right now with Flame Lash for the better for the DK. I'm getting so many power lash procs like everyone i target will just be like a fucking power lash for like no reason so you get this healing like all the time it has to be a bug because this shit like even before i use fossilize or anything like this shit just randomly procs for me all the time not complaining dk needs the love it's definitely top bottom three 1bx classes right now in my opinion so it needs all the love it can get but with our luck of course they're going to fix this shit not fix the stamina bug Burning Embers, uh, heavy ass hitting dot, heals you, yada yada, you guys know. Ferocious Leap, uh, almost 19k on tooltip now. Um, this is to kind of offset the downsides of running Iron Blood, because it does reduce your movement speed. This is a gap closer and an absolute must on the mag DK. Cauterize, this is a baby dick dog shit heal, but it's our only healing over time we really have, that we don't have to actively initiate. Coagulating blood. Uh, this is our oh shit button. Um, even when you're backpedaling on this build, because you have such great sustain when it comes to a desert rose, I spam this shit. Like even when I'm missing only like 25% of my health, I can spam this and get away with it. So, Dragonfire scale guys, stop sleeping on this. Stop, stop messaging me and saying this is dumb. You need this. I'm telling you right now, you absolutely need this. So the only downside to running Iron Blood is obviously your movement's a li little impaired, you know, just just a little bit. So Dragonfire Skill helps you deal with like Sorks or Snipe Spammers, you know, to apply pressure when you can't exactly get up on them when you want to get up on them. Plus, it does hella damage, guys. It does a lot of damage. I have so many clips of just people killing themselves, especially when someone hits you with a toxic barrage ult, and the whole time they're hitting you, you just see fireballs shooting at them, and they just essentially one-shot themselves. It's funny as shit when you see it. Uh, volatile armor, I use this, use this to pull people out of stealth. I actually apply this every 10 seconds just for a dot, because when you look at the tooltip, it's actually a really heavy-hitting dot, and it's a big-ass AoE. Then I have Race Against Time. We don't really care about the Minor Force all too much, but this does help offset your Iron Blood debuff. So the 30% and the 50%, it essentially is additive and subtractive, I guess is the way you want to put it. Um, this essentially makes your debuff only 20% effectively. And I've noticed when you pop this and roll dodge, you actually are still able to roll dodge at your normal speed and it also gives you like a little speed boost, like a little thrust. So I might go over like an advanced uh, kind of tutorial about how to pull this off. But uh, yeah, that's to help offset that. And then we get our major sorcery and our crit on our front bar through our potions. Use the alliance spell drought. Uh, cheap and serial, you can buy them. Temporal Guard, you can either use a Sword and Bordle or Temporal Guard for the passive mitigation on your back bar. Um, both are equally as good, it really just depends on the situation. 
And that does it for, I think, everything besides the CP. The CP is different from my other build. So we're going to go into the blue tree here. Not running any points in the Thaumaturge. I, I just don't like Thaumaturge, guys. Um, yeah, it makes your dots do more, but, you know. Um, this is a very tanky defensive loadout so you don't have to go and put more of your passes into your um, your mitigation portion of the tree i put everything into the offensive deadly aim which is literally every single one of your abilities mastered arms uh, not so much uh, this only procs uh i think whip and all your instant attacks like the instant damage from burning embers and engulfing flames and then Biting Aura, your, your area of effects, uh, this does apply with uh, your Engulfing Flames and also your Leap. So all three of these, even though all of them do not increase all of your abilities, they do increase some of your abilities that you rely on. It is very important to have a high tooltip on your Leap because that's your burst. Everything else is just kind of passive chip damage. The Leap has to hit hard. The only defensive thing I have is Dual Street Buff. This from single target attacks, which is pretty much everything in the game, to be honest. You guys will have a lot more CP than me, so just go at it. Toss your CP wherever the hell you want in the blue tree, wherever you got spot, more the merrier. Red tree. Uh, my RB actually does not work. Oh, there we go. That's another issue we're running into. So this tree, I did kind of gut it a little bit. I do have a balanced vitality. You can almost take points out of here. Um, I'm still playing around with this a little bit, but the essentials, you need rejuvenation. And I really like Juggernaut because you're going to get trained a lot. People are going to be on top of you constantly since you do not have a super high mobility. This just gives you even more damage mitigation on top of that. So when you are getting bursted by literally an entire Zerg at a time. So this is another 10% mitigation on top of the 30% on top of our only our already passive resistances, which is absurd. And then survival instincts, this is for everything. This is your block, which again is bugged. You need the cost reduction, your roll dodge. I do that shit all the time. You're always inflicted by a status effect, let's be real, when you're 1BXing. So it's pretty much a 25% cost reduction across the board. Phenomenal. So that is is the passives or are the passives is our English hard of what I'm running in the red tree green tree uh, the only thing that fucking matters is war mount and gifted rider which is how it is so I think that was pretty winded you like how my controller just drifts you like this shit thank you elite series 2 controller for you $200 look it goes down too isn't that annoying but yeah thank you for your $200 piece of shit controller anyway Thank you guys for coming in, checking out the build. Hopefully you guys are still here toward the end. I did kind of ramble a little bit. I do apologize. I will be uploading probably like a little montage of this build in action. Or like I said, hit the notification bell. I will be streaming uh, kind of sporadically through the week on the weekends, weekdays. It just depends how I feel after work on that particular day. So thank you guys again for coming in to the channel. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. This is my opinion on sets to run there are all alternatives we can make a whole nother video discussing possible alternatives but i believe that hands down everyone should have access to these sets okay i mean they're crafted you can buy them really easy to get very cheap and it's super effective especially in solo play it's very important to be able to survive people's bursts and be able to have that turnaround potential. On the DK, that's where you struggle. You either have to do one or the other. Well, since there's so much intrinsic damage already in the game, the only thing you have to do is just live the burst and then have this sustain to coincide for when you're able to actually get to that point to turn around. And with these two sets in tandem, you have no problem achieving that, okay? So again, guys, thank you. Have a great day. Peace.